Welcome to the 96th episode of the Reading and Writing Podcast. I'm your host, Jeff Rutherford. Stay tuned for my interview with Nate Kenyon. Nate is the award-winning author of science fiction, horror, and suspense novels. His latest novel is Diablo III, The Order, a media tie-in novel based on the popular video game. Stay tuned for the interview. Welcome back to the Reading and Writing Podcast. My guest today is Nate Kenyon. Nate's latest novel, Diablo III, The Order, is a media tie-in novel exploring the universe of Diablo III, the popular computer game. Nate, welcome to the podcast. Thank you. Happy to be here. Sure. Well, if the listeners haven't heard about Diablo III, The Order yet, can you give them a sense of what the novel is about? Sure. Um, it surrounds character Deckard Cain, which for people who are familiar with the game is a very iconic character in the Diablo universe. Um, and it has to, it takes place in between D2 and D3. The, you know, it's been 12 years or so since the last edition of the game. And the book, the novel, takes place in between, so about 10 years in between each. Uh, and Deckard Cain is searching for what he believes to be the last of the Heratric Order. Um, he's not sure whether he's the last or whether there are others. Um, and he picks up some signs both of uh, possible existence of more of, of them and also an impending invasion of sanctuary, a demon invasion that's going to um, destroy worlds. So he's trying to both find the Haradrim to potentially save the world and, and find a way to stop it himself. So, And in the course of that, he um, reunites or, or meets, I guess, for the first time, uh, Leia, who's uh, um, the child of another character um, from the first two. Um, and, uh, you know, through various circumstances, they end up together. And um, it's an interesting pairing because he's an older man and she's a very a young child. Um, and so through the course of the novel, we find out how that relationship becomes what it is in D3, the, in, the, in the video game. Right. So. Well, well, I know some people are curious about how media tie-in fiction works. Can you talk about the writing process for Diablo 3, the order? Did you write an outline that was approved by Blizzard? Did you send them the manuscript after it was finished, or do you send it to them like chunk by chunk? How, how does that work exactly? It's a really interesting process, actually, different than I've done two now, mm-hmm. my first two tie-ins with Blizzard and Pocket, and uh, it's very different than my original work. Um, and in many ways in, in a very good way. I mean, it's uh, very much more collaborative. You're working with a team. Blizzard is very hands-on. They're very demanding. Um, they're incredibly talented and creative people, and they mm-hmm. you want to get things right, and uh, it's very important to them to get the universe right. So they uh, come t- to me with um, an idea that's that they have fleshed out to some extent, and, you know, we have some um, conference calls to see if things fit and bounce ideas off each other, and... Um, once that seems to click, then I'll, I, I fly out there and meet with them. We go over all sorts of stuff. I bring ideas to the table. They tell me things they'd like to do. I go back and, and write an outline, which is pretty extensive. And then we'll go back and forth on that a few times. Um, and then I'll start writing the novel. Um, so, you know, during the course of the novel, I'll bounce things as they, ha- as they sort of come up, you know, through various members of their team to see if they work or don't work. Uh, and then I usually don't deliver anything till the end of that first draft, and then they'll right. read it, and there's pretty extensive revisions, rewrites through at least two or three pretty extensive revisions. Um, yeah, and, uh, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a really intense, really collaborative, really creative process where, um, you know, they, I think we feed off each other in a good way. Right. Great. Well, well, how did you originally? Um, uh, how did you originally start writing the the media tie-in novels that you have written? Uh, Blizzard approached my agent at the time, um, Brendan and Ian. Uh, they had read a short sci-fi novel I'd written called Prime, and really loved it. And they contacted him and asked if I would be willing to talk to them about writing for them. Uh, at the time, they were looking for me to write Starcraft Ghost Specters, which is the first tie-in I did with them and you know it's a sci-fi it's a dark Mm sci-fi so they thought Prime would you know my some of my horror background was perfect Um, and so we had a conference call and really hit it off um, and I you know 
why not? I'd never done anything like it before. It was new for me. <laughs> um, you know, but had was, you played the games at all? Uh, a little. I mean, I, you know, years ago, I'm not a huge, <laughs> yeah. huge gamer. But uh, right. um, but you know, when I was younger, I played the original StarCraft and Diablo and right, Warcraft right. stuff a little bit. But I'm not, you know, I'm not. That was the biggest. That was the scariest thing to me. You know, yeah. um, taking on something where you have legions, millions and millions of diehard fans that just live and die on this stuff and. And wanting to get it right for them is, was the most important thing to me. Wanting to write things that they would like and respect and, and enjoy. Right. Um, so yeah, that was that was that was scary. It was scary, but it, <laughs> but you know it was a challenge, and um, it actually I think inspired me to do good work because I, you know, had to immerse myself in the material for months ahead of time. I really wanted to make sure I knew the universe inside and out. Right. Um, well, I don't want to give the idea that you only write media tie-in fiction. You, you've written several, several very well-received horror novels, Sparrow Rock, The Bone Factory, The Reach. Uh, how is the process different when you're writing an original horror novel? It's very different. Especially my first my first three, uh, Bloodstone, The Reach, and, and Bone Factory, were written, all pretty much written before I got a contract for anything. So, you know, they were very, it's a very solitary process, you know, where it's really up to you um, to, to decide where you want things to go. Uh, Sparrow Rock uh, was the first novel that I wrote really, you know, more or less from the beginning um, with a contract already in hand and working right. with an editor. And so it was a different, a bit of a different process. I delivered an outline for that. Um, but again, it's still fairly solitary. I mean, you know, you talk to your editor, they give you a couple of thoughts, and then you're off on your own. And it's your idea and your story. <laughs> With StarCraft and Diablo, it's a completely different animal. I mean, you're working with a very fleshed out universe that, you know, dozens and dozens of novels and manga and, and games and all sorts of stuff have already gone there. And right. so you're, re- it's, it's, a, it's, it's both uh, a bit, you know, it's, it's a bit terrifying and a bit constricting in some ways because obviously you can't start from scratch, but it's also very supportive in a weird way because you've always got something to fall back on. There's right. always a very deep storyline, you know, mm-hmm. underneath you and you know, you know, things are, are supporting various, various decisions you make, you know, in terms of uh, lore. So, right. um, so it's, it's a very different process and very collaborative, as I said before, you know, both in po- right. Pocket for my editor Pocket, which I haven't talked about yet, but Pocket's a part of this process too because mm-hmm. they're, you know, Simon Schuster's the publisher. Um, so it's a really a collaborative effort between all three of us. Sure. So, so um, what originally drew you to writing? Have you always written? I always have, yeah. Um, since I was, you know, able to read, you know, um, very young age, I was writing stories. It was always something I loved to do. Um, my parents were very, you know, supportive of that when I was a kid, and we didn't have really, a, you know, we had like a little tiny black and white TV. We didn't really watch TV. I listened to records and write and read. You know, um, I grew up in Maine. It was a, you know, pretty quiet existence in a lot of ways. Um, so I had to entertain myself and uh, and think creatively, be imaginative, you know, and and so that was what I did. So, so do you ever feel since you since you did grow up in Maine that, that there's this huge shadow if you're, oh, if, yeah. you're if you're a horror writer? Yeah, I think it's funny because I think when you're younger, uh, at least for me, when I was younger, I think it was more of an inspirational thing. You know, sure. Here's Stephen King. He did it. He's I loved his work. I mean, he was an inspiration to me when I read him. Um, and you don't think when you're young, you know, even in your early 20s, I think you don't. There's there's maybe not as much of a sense of, of place and in, um, in the you know sort of the universe of writing and just say, oh, I want to write like this guy. I'm gonna you know do it. And uh, I think at some point you begin to realize, oh boy, you know, it's, there is this you know huge presence that's sort of hovering over you. Like God, I, I, you know, you're always going to be if you're writing horror and you're from Maine, you're always going to be, be yeah, prepared yeah, of course, king. So. It's pretty intimidating at a point, but when you're young and stupid, you don't really, you know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you just really just, I'm going to write a good book, you know, right? right? Like, you know. So, so what was the path to publication like for you for your first novel? Uh, everybody's very different, but mine was pretty unusual in that I, um, I wrote at, right after college, I uh, wrote um, a couple of novels, uh, had some close calls, wrote, uh, published some short fiction, didn't get a breakthrough in a, in, in a novel. Um, moved to Boston and started a regular 9 to 5 job and kind of I I stopped submitting novels at that point although I was still writing I kept writing all the way through Um, and then about almost 10 years after that I was you know um, 
close to 30. Um, and uh, I, I said, you know, I, I don't want to let my, you know, this is what I want to do my whole life. And, right, uh, right. I, why am I letting it die just because I've, you know, it's been difficult. It's difficult for everybody. Yeah. So I, um, I said, I'll try to give it one more shot. And I reached out to Ed Gorman, who's a famous editor and writer. And, um, yeah, I've traded emails with him. He's an incredible guy. Uh, yeah. Helped so many people. I mean, I'm just one of hundreds. But yeah. I shot him an email because I had kind of gotten to know him a little bit through another contact of mine at a magazine and I said you know I think you read something of mine years ago and I remember you saying I heard from a friend you liked it and and he said oh send me what you're working on now so I did and um, he read it and forwarded the half the book right to his uh, five stars a publisher that he'd helped found um, and then sold to Thompson Gale and said, uh, recommended they look at it and you know, a couple months later I had my first contract and that was it so after all the struggle and trying to break through it was remarkably easy as a <laughs> connection and uh, with the right person and the right publisher and so um, Bloodstone came out from Thompson Gale from Five Star mm-hmm. there um, in 06, and um, that was very well received and led to the paperback deal with Dorchester and, um, and Pocket. And now I'm writing for Thomas Dunn as well. So Right. Um, what are you working on for Thomas Dunn? A uh, thriller called Day One. Um, I've, to some extent, intentionally been trying to transition into a thrill, the thriller mm-hmm. world. It's... it's um, and although I've always written kind of dark fiction and it's always the way my mind kind of goes, I'm a huge fan of thrillers and that's the way I've always sort of felt right. my writing would progress to. And um, so um, this is a uh, this is a thriller that takes place actually in New York City and uh, it's called Day One and it's on the day that machines become sentient and try to take over. So it's sort of like Terminator Day One in a way, and that right. um, before everything happens, and it's it's focused more on kind of consumer machines as opposed to military machines. But it's you know basically let's blow up New York City and see what happens, that kind of thing. So it's right. a lot of right. fun. Uh, I just finished the first draft, actually delivered it a month or so ago. So we're going to begin the process of getting that to print. Great. Um, and you had mentioned uh, earlier this science fiction novel, this kind of dark science fiction novel. Who, who published that? Uh, Apex Books. Okay. Um, did the um, did the book, and uh, I, I now have rights back. This was a few years ago, so I have a Kindle edition on my own that's up now, right? Available. One of my favorite works, actually. Um, Sort of neuromancer, um, snow crash kind of, uh, you know, noir, um, cyberpunk stuff, and it's it's really fun. It's very short. It's you know, um, fast read, and it's it's right. class. I'd actually love to. I've talked to my editor now um, a few times about expanding it into novel, a novel length, a full fleshed out novel length. Right. And, uh, so we may do that next. Great. Well, um, uh, when you're working on your own stuff, what's your writing process like? Do you outline extensively, or are you more organic? I didn't used to. I, I, I always thought of myself as the, you know, the see what happens as you go kind of writer. I never understood the outlining. It was very. Diff- I always felt it was very constricting, and I kind mm-hmm. of it kind of killed the creativity for me. I didn't want to write when I tried that. I didn't want to write the story. It was kind right. of done. But with Sparrow Rock, it was the first one I kind of had to outline for my editor, and um, I actually enjoyed it. It still took off in ways I didn't expect, but it helped keep me grounded to some extent. I didn't write myself into as many corners as I used to. Um, And then with the tie-in stuff, I have to outline very extensively, and I have to stay fairly close to it. Um, You know, so that's a different process, too. You know, I I found that I'm able to do both, and it's kind of surprising to me. I didn't think I'd be able to do it either way either way, but I, I have and I've enjoyed both ways. Gotcha. And um, given your success thus far, what, what tips or advice would you offer aspiring writers who want to have their novels published? You know, it's so different now than it was even a couple years ago, I think, in what I would say. I mean, I, you know, three or four years ago, the last thing you would suggest to somebody is to go do it on your own, but it's, it's definitely changing, and I think there's a legitimate path now to that. Um, and success in that way, perhaps even better than the traditional path. Um, but I would say a couple things. I would say, obviously, you got to read, you got to write, you got to do it every day, or you know, you have to have schedule and you have to consistently put words down on paper. Um, I would say, don't get discouraged. I mean, you know, it almost happened to me, and I'm sure there are any number of bestsellers that are sitting in people's drawers that are never going to be published because people gave up on them a day too soon. Um, so that's another thing. Don't give up. Um, and I think know the business. Uh, be professional. Um, you know, meet meet people. Go to conventions. Um, reach out on message boards. Be respectful. Be professional uh, of, of others. 
and make those contacts that can help you and understand how the business is changing because it, it's changing dramatically. And I think to understand the landscape is really important, how right. things work and what not to do. Um, so it's a lot of networking. It's a lot of talking to people and researching and understanding the business side of things, not just about the creative side of things. Gotcha. So, so what books, fiction or nonfiction, have you read in like the last six months to a year that really made an impression on you that, that kind of stood out? Hmm, I read a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, although the past six months or so, I've been <laughs> I've been completely, you know, sort of deluged by the two deadlines I've had, which is sure. Diablo and then uh, Day One. Right. Um, but I, I, I read a lot of stuff. I often go back and reread things, you know, favorite novels, um, right. uh, Ira Levin stuff. I've read a bunch of his. Back, reread a bunch of his stuff recently. I love his, his. He's got such a spare style. You know, no word is really wasted, which is really impressive to me. Um, I, uh, Michael Kimball's a, a, you know, another main writer. I love his work. I'm re- reading Green Girls, which is one of his more recent ones. Um, just read Deceit, uh, James Siegel, which is a lot of fun. Um, so there's, you know, I read, I, right. you know, I've read a lot of, I, before that I was reading a lot of Diablo novels because right. I was trying to <laughs> read everything I could around that universe. Yeah. So I was reading all the stuff that had been published already. Right. Um, you know, Richard Knack stuff and, uh, yep. and others. So. Well, great. Well, um, where can people find you online? NateKenyon.com. Uh, you can look me up on Facebook. Um, easy to find there. Twitter. Um, but my website's uh, natecanyon.com, and um, you can reach me through that. I have a contact up there, or, or, or Facebook is uh, easy. I'm on, on there. So Great. Well, again, we've been speaking with Nate Kenyon, author of many horror novels, and Nate's latest novel is Diablo Three: The Order. It's available in bookstores now. If you're a Diablo fan, you should check it out. So, so uh, Nate, thanks for doing the interview. Thank you. Appreciate it. Great. Don't mind me, just sneaking out to go to Kohl's. The home deals right now, they're too good to pass up. Like up to 40% off Cuddle Dead's bedding, up to 50% off the cutest fall decor, and up to 25% off Ninja Kitchen appliances. How can I resist? You can even get 15% off or 15, 20, or 30% off with a Kohl's card. So, yeah, I'm going all in for fall, and I can't even wait. Select styles. Offers end October 17th. Some exclusions apply. See store Kohl's account for details. Some coffee's fast, but not fresh. Some coffee's fresh, but only after a long wait. Speedway coffee is made fresh at the push of a button, hot or iced, so you can have fresh coffee your way, right away. Get two times the points when you buy any size hot or iced coffee drink with Speedy Rewards. 